Hello, I'm Liam, and we are playing Four Against Darkness. It has been much longer than I intended since we last visited Throck, Elric, Blesk, and Jim. And I am very happy to have some time to get back to this campaign. Thank you all for the encouragement to keep going. I really appreciate it. And please know that you are one of the main reasons I am back at it. So, where were we? The party has obtained intel related to the location of an eternal food cauldron, um, an artifact of interest to the Davigna Marcias, and I imagine to anyone who likes to eat. It's currently in the possession of an Etten adventurer. That's a two-headed um, giant of sort, not quite uh, giant, bigger, bigger than us. Um, I'm happy to report that dungeon dressings, dungeon name tables didn't let me down. They just wanted more from me. And after a short think, things started to take shape. This Etten was last seen entering the sneering sewers, a fell complex built by the Dark Blades on the remains of a ruin named in the old tongue Bah, and in common, the Fog. Who were the Dark Blades? I do not know, but I believe they are since departed, and this place has been taken over by, uh, well, by the kind of creatures we find in fiendish foes. So, uh, the dungeon is notorious due to an unnatural fog. Um, pulling that from Twisted Dungeons, visibility is scarce in this dungeon due to a thick unnatural mist that permeates the rooms. All ranged attacks are at minus one until the end of the adventure. We don't have a druid who could dispel the weather, so that's us. Um, it includes ranged attacks performed by foes, so we actually get a plus one to our defense against ranged attacks. So I've made some notes about the unnatural fog here. Uh, minus one for attacks, plus one for defense for us, and uh, that is that what else do we have mm -hmm. close that twisted final fights we will be using the rail the lair raid rules as i have been um you have to go through d6 plus four tiles before finding its lair so let's see let's see how many tiles we're dealing with four plus four so eight tiles so on the ninth tile um That'll be a room with the boss, unless uh, in every room after the first, roll a 1 in 6 uh, chance of meeting the final boss. Roll before contents of the room, and then uh, da, 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 apply 1 in 6 chance. If you do meet the boss before visiting its lair, it will automatically surprise the party. In addition, the first character in the marching order will trigger an HCL plus two trap. That's highest character level. Our highest character level right now is four, so that'd be a level six trap. That would inflict tier plus one damage. Our tier is one, so that'd be two damage if the character fails a save roll, etc. Um, if the party does not meet the boss before stepping into the lair, it means the boss wasn't warned of the party's coming or was not able to set up a trap. So... Yeah, we don't know if the Etten Adventurer knows that we're coming. Um, and that's the Lair Raid rules. I'll leave those just in case we have to deal with that. Um, I've made a note again to... Did I? We Yep, every room. Uh, so eight tiles to the Lair. Every room we roll a d6, and if we get a 1, it is uh, the Etten Adventurer that we are encountering early. So, just like we've done before, but like I said, it's been a while, so uh, I am feeling very rusty. But, let's, um, let's just do it. Here we go. We're going to roll for our entry room, and let's hide this for now. So, 40, uh, oops, no, we just rolled one, one d6 for the entrance room, that was a 4. It's going to look like this. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, we've got these kind of angled starts, and then a little curve section, and then it goes up, two, down, 
come to you here. And same thing on this side, right? One. Entrance breached. Okay. Should we go left or right? Let's go left. Follow the left hand rule. Um, nothing fancy going on in the very first room. Uh, it's safe on our way in. So we'll roll for. We got a 42. I think that's what I was going to roll previously. So we go. We got this little jog to the right. We go up three on this wall. And then a little jog this way. And then up. This is corridor two. So what do we have in room or uh, hallway number two? We're going to roll 2d6 on our table here. We got an eight. It's a corridor. It's empty, but we can search it and we will. Ah, yep. I don't like to search corridors in this case. We're, we're uh, more likely in a corridor to encounter a wandering monster. <clears throat> and um, wandering monsters uh, don't have treasure. And we're all about treasures. And, uh, well, we could, we do need a level for Throck. I don't know. Should we search it? Let's do it. You know what? We're hoping for clues and treasures. Um, clues and levels. Um and <laughs> let's see if we get anything it's empty after all that uh oh no two minus one quarters we do in fact get a wandering monster excellent okay wandering monster where's our table here's our table we're gonna roll 1d6 four and we get a minion um the unicorn hairs happen on the vermin table so they're not going to be unicorn hairs <laughs> just yet. So we are on the Fiendish Foes minion table. Search. Wandering monster. This does count towards our XP roll. And this is our 10th minion. So we will get an XP roll if we defeat these. Whatever they are. And what are they? 1. D6 plus 6. Orc looters. Two plus six, eight orc looters. Orc looters. Uh, level five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If we kill five of them, uh, they'll do a morale check. Orcs are afraid of magic and must, must test morale each time one or more is killed by a spell. Um, we are in... Oh, oh. When did you guys fall over? We're in a corridor. So, only Throck and Elric can attack with their melee weapons. Um, Blesk and Jim will have to use their uh, ranged weapons or spells. And the Orc looters can only attack Throck and Jim. So, uh, these are wandering. Actually, I got that backwards because we're... They were in all their wandering monsters in a corridor. They attack from behind. They attack Blesk and Jim. <clears throat> um, what else? Uh, shields don't apply. Uh, Elric's shield would count because he's got that shield of warning, but uh, he's in the back, actually, of this, so they can't reach him. So, what does Throck have? Throck has a bow. Elric has a sling, um, and then we've got Blesk uh, with her silver sword. Do we use a sleep right off the bat? I might use a sleep. How many of these are there? Eight. Yeah, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna do that because um, I. Yeah, thinking. Okay, let's look up the sleep spell. Sleep spell. We should really print these out separately, I think. Uh, spells, spells, spells. There they are. Spells. 
Sleep Spell. This spell works like an attack roll. It does not affect undead, dragons, and other monsters, certain other monsters. The wizard adds his level to the roll. Sleep will defeat one boss or d6 plus L minions if it hits. Let's do it. So we're going to do that right off the bat. Blesk rolls a 1, um, which is an automatic failure, right? <laughs> Excellent. We're off to a good start. Um, and she's burned her sleep spell already. So we do have a scroll. Let's uh, we'll say we use this one. Okay. <laughs> uh, that was Blesk Jim. Oh, you know what? I think they go first anyway. So it doesn't matter because uh, Blesk uh, will, when she does get a turn, if she gets a turn, uh, it w didn't cause any trouble for the orc looters unfortunately so let me go work looters they're gonna attack blesk and jim um they can there's only two of them that can attack in the corridor so blesk needs to defend she rolls a one that's an automatic failure so she gets hit uh, where's my pencil here we go so she takes a point of damage And Jim, five, and his defense is plus two, seven. He easily defends against that. No problem. Okay, now it's our turn. Blesk now flubs her sleep spell. Uh, Jim, who attacks with advantage with his two-handed sword, so he gets a three, plus his attack is five. That's eight. So he takes out one of these orc looters with his two-handed sword uh elric does he have anything fancy he can do i think he's just gonna attack with his sling um four and his attack is plus two uh, so that's a six and that does hit so uh, elric manages to take out an orc looter with his sling now throck uh, he has that masterwork hammer, but he can't use it in the corridor uh, behind everybody. So he uses his bow. It's three, his attack is four. That's seven. So he takes out an orc looter with his bow. Um, I always forget about his rage ability. We're not going to use it here, but uh, just make a note. Uh, I don't know if I've ever used it. I may have successfully remembered to use it once in all these adventures. Um, okay, that's everybody. So now it's the orc looters. So They'll attack Blesk and Jim. Blesk fails again. It's an automatic fail on a one. Jim, three, plus his defense of, five, uh, of two is five. And so he successfully defends against level five. And now it is, do they have, uh, I forgot, okay, I already forgot the fog rule, um, I should have subtracted one from both of their attack rolls, I think they still hit anyway, uh, if I recall, um, so, the thing that made me think of that is wondering if the orc looters have any kind of ranged attack. Uh, it doesn't say that they do. So, I'm just going to go with that. Let me know in the comments. if we, I rarely fight multiple enemies in corridors. Um, and, like I said, I'm feeling really rusty. So, let me know if you think these guys should, have al should also be getting attacked here. I'm going to proceed as if they cannot attack. Um... Should we look that up real quick? Wandering monsters, where would it be? Corridors. Ba -ba -ba. Cleaning or fighting equipment. Selling equipment. How to attack. Fleeing entrance rooms. Yeah. We can do a find here. Find. Corridor. Marching order, 
marching order and corridors the corridor is large enough to allow two characters to walk side by side so a group of four characters will have two characters in the front and two in the rear um in a corridor only characters in places one and two can fight while characters in places three and four can only cast spells or attack over the heads of their friends if they have a bow or a sling the same restriction applies to monsters when you encounter a group of monsters in a corridor only two of them will be able to attack your characters so it does not appear as if the orc looters can attack us the orc looters who are, who are not in the front so uh, I'm gonna go with that okay um yeah here's where I, so I didn't wasn't showing that here's where I was reading that uh, and here's where the same restriction applies to monsters okay all right hiding that again where were we um <laughs> The orc looters attack. Uh, was it our turn? It was our turn. And Blesk and Jim got hit. And now we're doing our... Yeah, now we're doing our attack. So, Blesk. Um, she has a sleep scroll, but we're doing great without it. And we're about to force these guys to do a morale check. So let's just go. She's going to attack with her silver sword. That's a five plus her attack of... Oh, against orcs, she gets plus one to attack. So that's a ten. So she actually takes out two of these orc looters. One, two. Do the orcs get a bonus against her? Oh, let's see. There is a table. Here it is. Um, elves add plus one when attacking or casting spells against orcs. Elf. Yeah, it doesn't say that orcs get a bonus against them. Maybe they do. <laughs> Again, let me know. Uh, all right, where are we? Um, she took out two. They need to do a morale check. Where is our morale? Morale procedure. Keep forgetting to show this. When minions lose more than half their number or a boss loses more, roll d6. So here we go. Four, they're going to stay in the fight. Uh, what I was looking up here before was this, um, where did it go? Hatred summary table. Elves add plus one when attacking. Uh, but it doesn't say orcs get the same bonus against elves. So... That's where we're at. We got two orc looters left. They're staying in the fight. Jim, let's see what you got. We're going to roll with advantage. That's a four. Plus your attack of five is nine. That takes out one more of these guys. We're down to one orc looter. Let's see if Elric. Two minus one for the fog is one. Plus two is three. That's not enough to hit him with his sling. Throck. 3 minus 1 for the fog is 2, um, plus his attack of 4 is 6, and that is enough to take out the orc looter. And these were wandering monsters, so there's no treasure, but we get an XP roll. Throck has failed multiple times <laughs> to level up. He basically has a 50-50 chance of leveling up. He's got to roll a 4, or a 5, or a 6. And we'd really like to get him to 4. Um, that would make all of us level 4. And I would just feel happy. So, here we go, Throck. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. A 1. Throck does not level up. Okay, and we reset our minion counter to 0. And we mark off that we did that. Throck. Okay. Uh, maybe we can find a barbarian trainer somewhere and give Throck a little uh, a little help. <clears throat> okay, he's gonna, he's gonna rage without me remembering. He's just gonna do it on his own. Where are we at? Corridor two. Let's see where we're going. Um, why this again? Okay, next room. Uh, what do we got? Two two. 
There's our room tables. We've got a square room uh, with two doors. Is it three by three? Yep. We've got a door on the north and a door on the west. Um, I'm going to roll and see if these are locked right off the bat. Uh, let's see. Six. Um, what are the locker doors and rules? Uh, let's look this up. Let's show this. They're optional rules. I like using them because it adds a little bit of complexity. Right now I'm feeling like maybe I don't need more complexity. But um, it is what it is. So let's go to 63. It's a challenge, you guys, to uh, put aside any game like this for... Oh, has it been a month? It's been at least a month since I've played. Um, and to pick it up again. Um, we'll get it back, but it's going to be a little rough <laughs> here today, I think. Here's the optional rules that I use. Uh, I just, can I make this bigger again? There we go. On a roll of one or two, that door is locked. Okay, we rolled a six. That door, the western door is not locked. The northern door is locked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna color them in if they're open. Yeah, that's probably the well yeah, I'm gonna color them in if they're open or unlocked, I mean. And we'll leave it uh, not colored in. And we need to roll the difficulty of the lock. Um da -da -da. roll d6 for the level of the lock bashing a door open I thought there was a minimum level of the lock I thought the minimum level was 3 oh there's a sturdiness of the door and the level of the lock roll a die d6 for the level of the lock oh right we don't have a rogue that's why I don't use that roll if we had a rogue who was going to lock pick the door um, this would matter, but we don't have anybody who can actually lock pick, so the level of the lock doesn't matter. All that matters for us is the level of the door. So we're going to roll another die to determine how sturdy the door is, um, and that is a minimum of three. So we've got a door with a sturdiness of three. Write that in pencil here. Okay. <laughs> And the deal there is you can attract wandering monsters when you're trying to bash it open. So you can fail to bash it open. Alright. This is room three. So. What do we have going on in room three? Room three. Hide this. Oh, no, we need that. <laughs> and we're going to go to our table chart um, roll 2d6 uh, 8 in a room we've got minions roll d6 on the minions table so this will be our I'm going to mark down that keep track of how many minions we killed and uh, we're going to go straight to the fiendish foes minions table and we'll roll d6 here 1 more orc looters Oh, geez. I'm going to kill all you guys just by rolling dice. I guess that's the way of things. Uh, we rolled a five over here. So we've got 11 orc looters. <laughs> uh, orc looters. And we know their deal. Um, level five. We've got 11 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, um, do we have, we have three lightning bolts, and they have to do a morale check if we kill any of them with a spell. So, with 11 of these guys, that might come in handy, because we have four, so three of our folks are going to get attacked three times. Um, this, this could be, uh, this could be tough. We get to attack first, so let's do it. Throck. Um, he's going to roll with his Masterwork two-handed hammer. It explodes on six. And again, 
12. And again, because it explodes on a 5 or a 6, it's 17. 18 plus his attack of force, 22. Throck comes in swinging, and he takes out four orc looters before they even know what's up. Okay. <laughs> I feel like these... Okay, well, okay. Elric. <laughs> Elric. I imagine Elric is a little stunned by Throck's enthusiasm. Let's see what Elric can do. He'll roll. He's attacking with his one-handed hammer. Silvered hammer, three plus two is five. He takes out one as well. Um, unfazed by Throck's display, Elric manages to down his own orc looter. Uh, Blesk, I don't think we're going to waste a spell again because um, <laughs> they're almost all... Um, they're almost half dead already. So, Silver Sword, Blesk, here we go. Two plus five against orcs is seven. So she takes out... Um, an orc. And now we do a morale roll. One. I believe that is a flea. Right? So, where's our core rules here? Back down to the morale. Where'd it go? I just saw it. Here it is. Yep, one to three. Monsters flee. So the remaining five orc looters <laughs> say, uh, we're out of here. And <laughs> <laughs> they leave their treasure behind. And what treasure do they have, you ask? Let's see. Um, tre three treasure rolls at minus one. So, fiendish foe treasure table. Let's roll three of these all at once. Six. So we got uh, five, four, and three. One piece of jewelry worth 2d6 times 20 gold pieces. So that's 10 times 20, 120 jewelry. 120 gold pieces. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Is roll the uh, boss die. Um, jewelry, one gem worth 2d6 times 10 gold pieces. 40. So a gem worth 40. And uh, three. Choose either one, find a scroll with a random spell, or two, find any non magical weapon of your choice. There is a two in six chance that weapon is silvered and you can attack raids with it. If it is silvered, the value increases by 20 or 40. So we, I like collecting silvered weapons just on the off chance we ever run into wraiths. I don't know where we run into them. I don't think I've seen them on any tables yet. They're not in the weird monster. Oh, here we go. It's a fiendish foe boss. Yes. We want silvered weapons, please. Um, Elric and Blesk already have silvered weapons. So this would be... Let's go for a two-handed sword for Jim or a two-handed hammer for Throck. Um, let's try for Throck again, because he needs, he, uh, he's the MVP of that fight. <laughs> so, find any non-magic, there's a two and six chance, so one or two, so we've got a two-handed hammer here. On a one or a two, it's silvered. It's not. Okay, so we just find a mundane two-handed hammer, which isn't worth a whole lot, but we will note it. Noted. Okay. All right. Um, we didn't check in that room uh, if the boss was there. And I think if we rolled at this point, um, it would just be confusing. So I'm just going to try harder to remember next time. And in fact, maybe what we'll do the next room we find, we will um, roll twice before we do anything else. So... Let's go west through this door that is open. And uh, what do we got here? Six one. Six one is in fact a room. So let's, before I forget, that's what I'm doing. I'm knocking you guys over with this paper. That's not good. So room six one, we're gonna roll. We get a one. 
and the Etten adventurer is here waiting for us and he has set a trap um, so we go through here I'm gonna add a little connector maybe I'll add two because just to make this room fit better it's just the way I like to do these maps we've got a door here oh that's the door we just opened so one two three up three and over three got a door here and then down two on this side this is a long hall some kind of like meeting hall or a throne room even or so well he's an adventurer so i don't know that he lives here he's just taking up maybe temporary residence in this place let's roll for these uh doors um i've already forgotten <laughs> do we still have it here let's find it lock so this door is locked every door is locked where's the lock picking a door here we go roll of one or two that door is locked i should really write let's write that down so i don't have to keep looking up one or two locked all right northern door is locked southern door is locked they're both locked northern door sturdiness four where's my pencil four i know the characters wouldn't test that right now but if i don't do it i won't remember so a little bit of world building right now um and now we face the etten adventurer so first off uh, let's look up these rules again if you do meet the boss before visiting its lair it will automatically surprise the party so he gets a first attack and uh shields wouldn't count except elrix does because it's a shield of warning that i believe he got from a lady in white and uh in torment rest if i recall correctly so um all that means for us right now is that the etten adventure will attack first he's been warned of our coming um in addition the first character in the marching order that is throck will trigger an hcl plus two trap so it's not his level it's the highest character level it's four plus six so it's a level six trap that will inflict tier one plus one damage if the character fails a save roll so we need to roll i believe we roll we need to get a six do we get any bonus for rolling this well let's see what we get <laughs> six and it explodes so if, if we have to roll but on a six i think is an automatic success just like a one is an automatic failure so however that was a, whatever the details of that rule is we uh he saved so good job throck um ducks out of the way of whatever this trap was um okay and now the fight is on so we need to find our uh at an adventurer and he is on page something at an adventurer page 54 54 <clears throat> hcl plus two boss so we are here in room four room four we will get an xp roll if we defeat this guy uh so he's a level six Etten adventurer level six uh one um tier plus four life so we are tier one uh the abyss would be uh tier two so he's got five life three um final bosses he won't flee uh so we don't do a morale check if i remember correctly but um we could knock him down a peg um he's got two attacks per turn a grab attack inflicting tier damage and one axe swing inflicting tier plus one damage so his grab attack does one damage and his axe swing does two damage the yeah, adventurer is not immune to sleep but it takes two successful sleep spells to put him to sleep the first sleep spell affecting the creature will only make him drowsy 
Uh, the second sleep spell will put him to sleep for good. The two heads of the Etten Adventurer are frequently bickering, so all creatures' attacks are aimed at random targets. Now, this, this gave me pause in the last uh, video, and um, I think I've been doing something wrong up to this point. My bosses that we've encountered who's, who have had multiple attacks, I've been splitting them up, those attacks, amongst the party members. The fact that they call it out here as if this is a, an unusual thing, um, that his attacks go uh, go to are aimed at random targets, makes me think the other bosses are not aimed at random. Their multi-attacks are not aimed at random attacks, which would make the bosses more challenging, which I, I like. Um, and so I'm going to try, I think, going forward. Uh, so not this at an adventurer, but other bosses. And if they have multi-attacks, I'm going to apply them to uh, whoever they are attacking. That one person. So, okay. Uh, with that said, a target hit by his grab attack takes tier damage. Okay, we'll read about that in a minute. Um... All mundane weapon attacks hitting the Etten have a 2 in 6 chance of being ignored. Blows from Masterwork or Magic Weapons ignore this rule. Okay, so I think that's defining what is mundane for us. Anything that's not Masterwork or Magic. So, Throck and Jim are okay. Um, Blesk has spells. And uh, Elric only has, he has a silvered hammer, but that doesn't appear to count <clears throat> as a non-mundane weapon here. Ends are very difficult to restrain. We don't have any of that to worry about. Okay, so he attacks first. Who is he going to attack? Um, where's my four-sided? Here we go. His first attack is his grab attack. He's going to attempt to grab um, Blesk. So, and he'll swing his axe at Jim. So, how do we do this? Let's see. So, Blesk. Uh, her defense is plus one, three, plus one is four. That is not enough. She does get grabbed. Now, she needs to... A target hit by his grab attack takes tier damage. So that's one. So, oh, she's already taken two points of damage. She's down, she's down quite a bit. Um, and must save versus the Etten's level or be thrown against another random target. So the Etten's level is six. She needs, uh, and she doesn't make it. So she gets thrown against... Um, this wouldn't be Jim, I don't think. So, or, or bless herself. So one to three, it's Throck, and so it's Elric. So the Etten picks up <laughs> Bless, throws her at Elric. Um, let's see. If the grabbed character is thrown, both the grabbed character and the new random target must spend their next turn to recover their footing and may not attack. So, <laughs> that's pretty brutal. All right, meanwhile, uh, the Etten swings his axe at Jim. Jim is going to try to defend. He rolls a three. His defense is two. That's a five. He does... Nope, he does not defend. That's a level six. So he gets hit by the axe for two points of damage. Okay, our turn. Blesk and Elric are picking themselves up. Um, Throck. Here we go. We explode on a 5 or a 6. <laughs> 1. That's an automatic fail. Uh, Throck um, does not hit the Eden Adventure. I need to remember about the rage. Um, Jim. Uh, he rolls with advantage. 6. Explodes. One, that's seven, plus his attack is five, that's 12. So he actually does two points of damage to this guy. Nice hit, Jim. Okay, but it's the Etten's turn again. Okay, who is he going to 
Uh, where's my four-sided? Who's he going to try to grab? One, that's Throck. He tries to grab Throck. Barbarians add plus half of their level to their save. So, um, and we're saving against its level. So, three, roll a three, half our level rounded down is one, that's four, that's not enough. Um, Throck does get grabbed and uh, thrown. Oh wait, did we defend? That was our defense roll against the grab. So three plus four. So he gets grabbed. Now we roll um, and see. Oh, and he does save versus the throw. Okay, so he takes one point of damage um, for being grabbed, but he resists being thrown. He's too tough to get thrown right now. So that's Throck. Who will he swing his axe against? Um, that could be anybody. Two, that's going to be Elric. Uh, Elric defends with a three plus his defense of two. It's not enough. So Elric gets hit for two points of damage by this massive axe. Okay, now it's our turn. At least everybody gets to go this round, all right? So Throck, here we go. Explodes on a five or a six. Two. His attack is plus four, and that's six. That's an, that's enough to hit him. He hits the Etten Adventure, and he takes it down a peg. It's now level five. The Etten Adventure staggers a little bit. Um, maybe drops one knee and gets back up. Let's see, Elric. Elric, um, Elric can't hit, right? Because he doesn't have... He doesn't have a masterwork or a magic weapon. Uh, he could heal or bless. Um, that's all his stuff. He's got bandaged nails, holy water, or healing potion. Who should he... Should he spend a heal right now? I don't know what else he could do. Um, attack. Ba -ba -ba -ba. This is where I'm kind of... Uh, some other rule systems have like a help action and you could uh he could try to distract the Etten or do something um, help somebody else line up a shot but i don't think he's really got anything he can do right now he could totally heal blesk um maybe we'll do that because in the worst case blesk could take three more points of damage in the next attack and she'd be down she'd only have two left and if he got if um if elric gets toppled or thrown again so let's do that i wouldn't normally use it with only to only heal three points of damage but this guy's dangerous enough let's do it i don't even really need to roll because he'll heal d6 plus his level so and his level's four so he he completely heals blesk i'm sure uh the heal is welcome what's going on with my eraser here there we go blesk blesk is completely healed we'll mark down one healing spell used by elric no, that's the bless. There we go. One healing spell used. And that's Elric's turn. Okay. Um, who's next? Bless. Let's do a... Um, what do we got? Two points. She could outright kill him with a lightning bolt. <clears throat> Should she do it? She doesn't really have anything else she can do. She... I don't want to waste two sleeps on him. So, yeah, let's cast a lightning bolt. I believe that is our attack. Um, spells, uh, casts, uh, spells. Yep, we add, we add our level to this roll. Five, she hits. Five plus her level is four. That's a nine. That's a hit. And the lightning bolts do two points of damages. Damages. Two points of damage to bosses. So that takes him out. Good job, Blesk. We are down. Lightning bolt. Okay. We got um 
he has the eternal food cauldron we have completed the Divigna Marcia's mission um how are we doing on time here oh wow this has run pretty long so I think um, we'll stop there for now and re we'll resolve all of this uh, when next we play and we'll continue to explore for some more treasure and levels and stuff, hopefully. So, until then, friends, keep your lanterns lit and your hearts warm. Thanks for watching.